by the late 19th century, with the more prosperous Little Rock residents chose to build their homes in newer neighborhoods to the south and west of the original city flat. At that time, new construction in the MacArthur Park neighborhood transitioned to building homes for rental. By the 19-teens, apartment buildings were the area's most common type of new construction. By the 1960s, deterioration in the neighborhood led to its designation as an urban renewal project. Urban renewal sought to eliminate quote unquote blighted areas, which often translated to downtown residential and commercial areas, which had declined in value due, due to suburban sprawl. Fortunately, the Little Rock Housing Authority recognized that this neighborhood contained historically and architecturally significant buildings, and they appointed a committee to identify the most important resources. This committee evolved into the Quapaw Quarter Association, which incorporated in 1968 and remains the city's historic preservation advocacy group. Now this building is here because of the streetcar line that went along 9th Street. So I'm going to talk a little bit about streetcars in Little Rock and in this area in particular. In 1891, Little Rock got its first electrified street railway system. Prior to that time, the city's very few streetcars were, were, were all mule or horse drawn. From the earliest days, both East 9th Streets and Rock Streets figured prominently in the streetcar system. The Chester Street line, what it was called, there were only two lines at this point in time, started at 15th and Chester, so down south of, of uh, I-630, which was the location of the car barns early on. Started there at 15th and Chester, and then it headed north on Chester to 5th, that was before that was Capitol Avenue, east on 5th to Louisiana, north on Louisiana to 3rd, east on 3rd to Rock, and then it came south, down Rock Street to 9th, here at the corner, went east on 9th Street over to Rector, which is no longer there anymore, it's kind of where the access road to I-30 is now, where there was a turntable. So you turn the streetcar around at Rector and bring it back, it came back west on 9th, headed down south on Rock, going this way, all the way down to 15th where there was another turntable, came back up Rock to 3rd and traced its route all the way back to 15th and Chester. So kind of a roundabout thing, but it was prominently on Rock and 9th Street for a lot of the time. By 1913, Little Rock Railway and Electric Company operated the East 9th Street line and it went from, came from Main Street, East on 9th, out to the St. Louis Iron Mountain and Southern Railroad tracks. By the late 1920s, that line extended past the railroad tracks and followed the current path of East 9th Street as it zigzags up to East 6th Street and kind of goes all the way around to Townsend, which not many people probably know where that is, but Townsend Street is still out there. There was a turnaround at Townsend and it would come back the same path. That's now near the East Little Rock Community Center today. Beginning in the late 19th century, commercial buildings were constructed along the streetcar line to provide for the basic needs of neighborhood residents. For instance, as early as 1893, there were commercial buildings built across the street. You can tell that that's not the historic commercial building that I'm going to be talking about on the corner. But that's where it was located, right across the street. It was one commercial building with three storefronts, 401, 403, and 405 East 9th Street. It housed Hoffman Grocery Store on the corner, which was later a Kroger store for a long time. Wallace Auto Company in the middle, which later became part of that Kroger store. And the Kindervarder Butcher Shop was the next storefront, which later became a restaurant. It was the Brown Sandwich Shop and the Porch Grill by the 1960s. This building was demolished about 1965. But in 1921, Kindervarder built a new shop which is the two-story red brick, you see it's still there, with a residence upstairs. And that building is kind of like a time capsule if you go across the street and look through the storefront window. It's pretty much untouched on the inside. They still have all the butcher, vintage butcher equipment inside. The kindergarten name is in the tile across the back wall behind the counter. Still has the original hook and rail system that leads back to the walk-in cooler, the whole bit. And somebody does still live upstairs. And there were similar clusters of commercial buildings along East 9th every so often. Uh, lots of those were at the intersection of 9th and Rector, which were probably demolished to make way for Interstate uh, 30. By 1871, John M. Geyer, also known as Papa Geyer, 
operated a bakery just north of here at 811 Rock Street. And interestingly, if y'all want to move in closer this way, you can. Yeah, it's still a little bit in the production yeah. area and that like that. There's a little bit of room over here too. Yeah. Disperse yourselves. <laughs> Okay. You're okay. We got some space over here if anybody wants to make a quick uh, quick in run around Rachel. You go for it. I'm taking a break. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you want you need to get something, feel free to go up to the bar. You won't bug me. Okay, so Papa Geyer has the bakery just north of here by 1871. And interestingly, Geyer, who was born about 1811 in Bohemia, also operated a beer hall, better known as Geyer Hall, as well as a beer garden and a saloon at the northwest corner of 10th and Rock, which about a block this way, from 1870 until about 1890. A building was constructed here at the northeast corner of 9th and Rock about 1894 and was occupied by Jacob Himmelrod, who used the front portion of the building which faced west on rock, it was always oriented this way, historically, for his confectionery up front, and he lived in the back part of the building. By 1897, Max Weiler had his bakery in the front portion of the building, and he lived in the back. But about 1906, there was a French gentleman, I don't know, did you know this guy was French, Ian? I yeah, found that out. Name, that. Named Jean-Pierre, and I'll probably butcher the last name, Fugarus, or something <laughs> like that. Um, he acquired the property, and he opened the Fugarus Steam Bakery at 823 Rock. And remember, it still faced this way. Um, but interestingly to me, because I live in Argenta, he operated a bakery at 421 Newton Avenue, which is now Main Street in Argenta, before he came over here to 9th and Rock. In 1908, the business was listed as the Little Rock Bakery, about 1910, he constructed the current building here on this site. He managed the bakery and his children worked here for him. His son Joseph was a delivery man for him in the neighborhood and his daughter Mary was a clerk up front. The oven for the bakery was located in the area now occupied by the tap room. It was located right in this spot. And Jean-Pierre, that's what I'm going to call him from now on, <laughs> died on January 17, 1914, at the age of 45, and his widow, Rosa, took over the bakery business, and she changed the name to the Rosa Fugarus Bakery. The bakery remained here until at least 1917. By 1920, Carl Such operated an auto garage in the building, and John Such had a shoemaking business here as well. About 1922, F.L. Pittman opened a drugstore here, and it was purchased by druggist Thomas J. Parman about 1926. And Parman had been in the drug business in Little Rock already. Thomas Parman died in August 1930, and his drugstore was acquired by Roy J. Baker, who kept the Parman drugstore name for at least 10 years. In the late 1930s and throughout the 1940s, an existing part of the building on the north side was opened as a separate storefront. It was back in this corner. It was called 821 Rock instead of 823, and it housed John B. Schaffner's shoe repair shop. About 1940, a brick wall was constructed to close off the oven room from the rest of the building going out west towards Rock Street. So that wall, this is this opening right here. This was closed up about 1940. <laughs> to make this area, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> to, make, to make this area, this little room right here, to make this a separate storefront, and it was called uh, 404 East Ninth. And I also think the small storefront, excuse me, this is 402. That was 404, and then the next one, the vintage store, was 406. I think the 406 was also added at that point in time in 1940-ish. Keep in mind that 404 and 406 were one story. If you go outside and look now, it's the two-story portion over here. In 1942, this building housed the following businesses. At 821 Rock, so back in the back corner, was Schaffner Shoe Repair. And then here at the corner of 9th and Rock in the portion that's now where the food truck is sitting, that was Parman Drugstore, but it was owned by Roy Baker. He kept that name, though. 404, so right in here. And actually, I think he occupied both of these in a little bit. It was Roy J. Baker's uh, liquor store. And then 406, where the vintage store is now, was the East 9th Street Barbershop. 
By 1950, the building had been enlarged on the north side, so on the back side. Roy Baker sold his drugstore, which he had renamed in the mid-1940s as Baker Liquor, or excuse me, Baker Drug. He sold it to Pete Peters, who then operated the MacArthur Park Pharmacy at 823 Rock in the corner portion from 1950 until the early 1960s. About 1955, the second story <coughs> apartment was built above these two storefronts going toward the east. And probably at the same time, the mid 50s, the wall right here was reopened between 402 and 404 East Night to make a larger space for Baker's liquor store. So he had both of these, the tap room and the seating area over here. And Baker's Liquor then occupied the whole area. And that in 406 storefront, where the vintage store is now, is a barber shop. I told you that, but it was several different people over the years, including Raymond McDonald, it was Eddie's Barber Shop, Pfeiffer's, and then Perry's, and probably others. Mr. Baker removed a large portion of the original building in the early 1960s. I've heard it could have been as early as the mid 50s, but I think it was early 60s, to create a drive through for his liquor store which moved, and then he moved into the triangle shaped portion back here, where they have all the equipment in the back. Baker's Liquor was there until the mid to late 1990s. Some of you have visited Baker's Liquor in the past. Will you show your hands? <laughs> okay, People are embarrassed. <laughs> but this building, um, in 1993, two teenage boys tried to rob Baker's Liquor um, they armed robbery at Baker's Liquor, by the way, and he shot them both, and they both died. Uh, one in the store, I think, and then one tried to run across the street and get help and died outside. And so, because of that, it was featured in the HBO documentary, uh, Banging in Little Rock. They showed the stuff out in front of Baker's Liquor at that time. But anyway, I digress. The building was renovated to become Stone Throw Brewery in 2013. Great adaptive reuse of a historic building. And now I'm going to ask Ian Beard if he'll just say a few things about who all's in it with you and just what you guys do. Welcome to Stone Throw Brewery. We're so glad you came here today. Um, I don't know if Rachel mentioned this, but uh, my day job at the State House Museum, also the Department of Arkansas Heritage. Uh, so uh, having y'all here is uh, uh, um, uh, works for, for both my jobs. <laughs> I'll count this as program numbers there too. But uh, um, we uh, there's four of us. Uh, uh, I'm Ian. We also have uh, Brad, Theron, and Sean. We all met at the local homebrewers club, the Central Arkansas Fermenters. Uh, we'd all been homebrewing for at least about a decade. Uh, and this is what they call in the hobby going pro. You start selling the beer that you've been giving away for free for so long. Uh, so um, we uh, started reno uh, re we, we started renovations on this building November of 2013. Um, opened for uh, brewed our first batch in the back on the 4th of July. We all have the day off. We all have a day job. Uh, and uh, we opened for business on August 1st and have been going ever since. Um, and we have, um, we do a number of different beers, and sorry today, we offer a pear cider uh, for all of you guys who don't like beer. Uh, but uh, all this stuff is brewed in-house, and we're welcome to take a look at the equipment uh, afterwards uh, and, and take a look around. Uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, we love being in the MacArthur Park Historic District. Uh, it's a great walkable neighborhood. Uh, it's actually all-day happy hour if you walk in, uh, so we've uh, kind of become a local pub for the people who live around here. Uh, this was this was the first neighborhood I lived in when I moved to Little Rock, uh, so it's always kind of got that uh, just like the German immigrants 120 years ago. It's always got that uh, that first stop on your way into town uh, uh, sort of feel to it. So uh, we're glad you came to check this out uh, and have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody has any questions. Just come find me. I know that was a little bit confusing with all the different storefronts not being able to see it from the outside, but I felt like you would appreciate being inside and telling you the whole. Much easier to understand from the outside. But our next sandwiching and history tour will be Friday, March 7th at Christ Episcopal Church, 509 Scott Street in Little Rock. Come join us. If you didn't get one of the new, fabulous new brochures, then I've got lots of those if anybody needs one of those as well. All right. Thanks for coming, y'all. Yes. Uh, I had a, just a comment. Uh, I had a liable to be mm -hmm. next door to me. He told 
me that the, uh, there was a there was a group of policemen that used to meet in the back room and play poker. Did you run across that at all? I did. <laughs> 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 So it is true. Yeah. They, used to, they used to meet back there regularly. Yeah. I've heard that. Hi, Sean. You're coming out on. I told you one of the things. That, uh, well, you can, you can visit with Ian. I'll tell you what. I bet Ian would be more than happy to tell you about the story of the poker games over a beer at the tour. <laughs> And if you want a little more information about the brew, we've got some uh, handouts, too, that you can take with you. that has got stuff like um, um, our brewery hours and things like that. We're open until 9 today, as Rachel mentioned. Uh, we're open uh, usually 4 to 9 on Thursdays and Fridays, uh, 12 to 9 on Saturdays, 12 to 8 on Sundays. This is actually a little older. It says that we're open until 6 on Sundays, but we're open later now. And actually, if you come back from 12 to 4 this Sunday, we have a Valentine's Market. Uh, so you can come do some Valentine's shopping. The Waffle Wagon will be back again for a beer brunch. Uh, they're doing a special uh, collaboration with Loblolly Creamery on some sort of pecan, butter, ice cream, I don't know, waffle thingamabobber, which is going to be delicious. Um, uh, so you can come, come and try that out. Uh, uh, also, we do Archie Pub Trivia, sponsored by the Department of Arkansas Heritage, every Thursday at 6.30, so you can come and uh, sample your Arkansas trivia. Uh, we actually, in honor of the, uh, the, the, the pear cider coming out, we, uh, last night's theme was the fruit industry in Arkansas. Uh, so I had all sorts of great questions about apples and plums and strawberries and things like that. Uh, and um, we have a different food truck every time we're open, barbecue every Thursday night, Southern Gourmet every Friday night, um, uh, Mexican food every Saturday, and of course waffles for brunch every Sunday. Uh, so uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to, to let you sample some beer today, uh, but come back and join us some other day too. Uh, Little Rock, the bars can be open on Sunday, uh, but we can sell beer to go the sun on Sunday because of yeah. Yeah. So you can come get a jug of beer to take home with you on a Sunday as well. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. And and as we mentioned, Ninth Street Vintage is open next they door. You need to do some shopping. Yeah. Open till five. Open till five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the shirts, yeah, our shirts are eighteen dollars. Uh, unless I I'm just gonna get some shit.